our former chiefs and our current chiefs. So thank you for being here. Uh, a special welcome to Chief Engel and Chief Mackey. Uh, thanks for what you're doing, thanks for showing up. Uh, and to the family of Steve, um, Mom Lola, thanks for raising a great American. And our state and country is better off because of what you did in bringing uh, this amazing patriot uh, to us today. Uh, Kelsey, I know it takes a team, especially to have the success that he has had. And a lot of times when we leave work, we don't always leave work and you're that support structure for them, uh, for him every day, helping him be the best airman and now soon to be chief that he can be. So thank you very much. To the kids, Braxton and Zoe, you know, as a father myself, there is a certain amount of support that your children bring you. And uh, you may not know that yet. He loves you very much and he's so proud of you. And uh, you guys bring a tremendous amount of support to him. And he would not be able to do what he does without this amazing support structure. Big brother Chris, thanks for being here. As a big brother myself, I know you kept him in line. You wouldn't tell me his nickname growing up. Uh, I guess you can't say that kind of thing anymore, but maybe get him a couple of drinks and I'll tell you. Uh, brother Dakota, I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, about Steve. Uh, so Steve came to us to the 173rd Fire Wing about two decades ago. Joined maintenance as a crew chief r and then on the flight line as a DCC. And then in the recruitment play of the decade, SAC brought him over to the shadow maintenance team. So thank you for that, SAC, without which we wouldn't have this amazing American on our team in shadow. And the things he has done in shadow, first as shadow maintenance, then as shadow superintendent, and then finally as shadow chief, are commendable and incredible. Um, if any of you were to ever come over to ops and, and see the corner that we've kind of shoved shadow into, and then see the product that they produce, you would be in awe. And I know that because I experience it myself. And every time we have a visiting unit, whether it be F-16, F-35, one of the things they come away with, the Kingsley feeling, of course, our entire team, but especially blown away that we have an in-house GCI. We have Shadow and how proficient they are. And that is mostly, not mostly, I'll be fair, definitely in part to Steve's contributions, his resourcefulness, his creativity, his ability to find solutions to complex problems uh, is commendable. Um, they like to go TUI a lot, they like to go golfing, but part of that is building those professional relationships across the country. Steve Bitzer is known at NGV and at these other units, and when something breaks back in shadow, or we need new equipment, or we need new funding, Steve gets out his Rolodex, and Captain Susie and I were joking yesterday, he's a little bit like that uh, Michael Scott from The Office, where he's got, hey, let me call John at NGV, he's got two kids and a dog, uh, he's going to have the money that we need to fix this. And sure enough, he gets the money. Uh, resourcefulness and, uh, and, and using all available resources to get the job done, to make Shadow what it is today. Um, so last fall, I nominated him as the OSS Senior Enlisted Leader. And so I got to see a different side of Steve. And as a commander with his Senior Enlisted Leader, there's a lot of times where I just need somebody to bounce an idea off of. Hey Steve, what am I not seeing? Please give me some critical feedback. And what I found is that Steve is a very thoughtful and compassionate listener, and he has the ability to predict problems and solve them before they happen. Second and third order effects, this is what I appreciate about you, Steve, and this is why I know that you're gonna be a tremendous chief. Speaking of the role of chief, so for the family and for the friends who don't do this and, and come to this type of environment every day, uh, he is about to join the 1% of all the enlisted structure in the Air Force. Only 1% of our enlisted force gets to that accomplishment in their career. And that, you know, top 1% gets thrown around a lot these days in the news media, but this is the kind of top 1% that I can get behind. His dedication and his work ethic have got him here today. Uh, our doctrine talks about what a chief is supposed to do, and I'll quote, they wield tremendous influence at all levels of the Air Force, and they are strategic thinkers and put in strategic positions of influence. And that is exactly, Steve, the adventure that you're about to go in as our first OSS chief and our senior enlisted leader. Uh, speaking of chiefs, our council of chiefs, thank you for showing up and service stress today. Um, I've worked with many of you, and I'll tell you that you have earned your stripes and will continue to earn your stripes, and I appreciate that of all of you. Uh, I know that you'll welcome Steve into your group and to mentor him as he learns his new role and his new responsibilities. And please provide him that feedback and that consideration that you guys have gained throughout your years of experience. And that will make us all better as the OSS goes, as our wing goes, as we serve our state and our country. And so finally, 
Steve, to our OSS, uh, I'm very proud of our squadron, and I'm glad that you guys showed up today to celebrate with us, and to celebrate Steve for us and for you. Um, just 11 years ago, in 2013, we were an operations support flight. And so 11 years later, we are 52 authorized, with 51 in the squadron, officer, enlisted, and civilian. We have six different shops that do crazy different things. Not one of them is like the other. Every time a student pilot shows up to execute a mission for the day, from the beginning to the end, they are interacting with our OSS personnel. And we cannot train B Corps students without the talent that we have in our squad. And so Steve, this is our job, brother. They showed up for you today, you're gonna to show up for them. You're gonna inspire them. You're gonna think strategically to make sure that they have the equipment, the resources, you're gonna mentor our superintendents. You're gonna make sure that they know the direction that we're going. As we continue to train F-15 B Corps students and as we transition to the F-35 conversion, your job is instrumental in our future and our wing's future. Steve, as we go forward, you and I for the next couple months, and you and your next commander, the mark of our success will be their success. This is our team. You're gonna do a great job, Steve, and it's my pleasure to uh, be the first to congratulate you, Chief Bitzer. Thank you, Lieutenant Colonel Andy Levich. I will now read the history of Chief Method Sergeant Rank. One of the most significant events in our Air Force enlisted history was the creation of the rank of E-9, Chief Master Sergeant. The explosion of technology during and following World War II and the Korean War created a need for enlisted members with leadership and technical ability far above that normally required of a Master Sergeant. The ranks of Chief Master Sergeant and Senior Master Sergeant were created by Congress as part of the Career Compensation Act of 1958. The first Air Force promotions to Chief Master Sergeant were effective 1 December 1959, when 625 members were selected to be our Charter Chiefs. Being the first in this new grade was at times difficult. No standard of conduct or protocol was established for them. Most were already the movers and shakers in their units, so they saw little change continuing to work in their same, jo same jobs. In spite of limited direction, these Chiefs served with dignity and the highest standards of leadership while forging the grounding, ground rules that we follow today. During the 1970s, the official term of address for an Air Force E-9 became chief. Many years have passed since the first chief was promoted and attaining the rank of chief mass sergeant is still the pinnacle of an enlisted member's career. All that attain it pledged to serve with the same dignity and high standards the first chiefs and all since them have done. Today, the 173rd Fighter Wing is proud to have Senior Mass Sergeant Bitzer ready to become part of this noble and historic legacy as the 286th Oregon Air National Guard Chief Master Sergeant. Senior Mass Sergeant Bitzer, front and center. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the Publish the orders. Attention to orders. Special Order AA060, Senior Master Sergeant Stephen W. Bitzer, 173rd Operations Support Squadron, Kingsley Field, Klamath Falls, Oregon, is promoted in the Oregon Air National Guard and as a reserve of the Air Force to the rank of Chief Master Sergeant, effective 14 March 2024, and with a date of rank of 14 March 2024, signed Ellen R. Groundwell, Brigadier General, the Adjutant General. Chief Master Sergeant Bitzer's family, please join us on stage. All others, please be seated.
Sergeants are to be individually regarded as people who cannot be bought, whose word is their bond, who put character above wealth, who possess opinions as a will, who are larger than their vocation, who do not hesitate to take chances, who will make no compromise with wrong, who will not lose their individuality in a crowd, whose ambitions are not confined to their own selfish desires and interests, who are true to their friends through good report and evil report and adversity as well as prosperity, who do not believe that shrewdness, cunning, and hard-headedness are the best qualities of winning success, who are not ashamed or afraid to stand for the truth when it is unpopular, who can say no with emphasis, although the word is saying yes. Chief Master Sergeant Stephen Bitzer, I am proud to call you Chief. Two of the best trainers in the Air Force, Tim Otis and Kevin Arnold. I mean, they had the patience of a saint. They would sit there, you know, hour upon hour with me, just watching me complete tasks, making sure that I mastered it. And after I mastered it, they would, you know, show me the tricks of the trade. Justin Cunningham, you know, you were a brother to me in r and and you showed me, you know, kind of the life of the Air Force. You showed me the fun part of being in the Air Force. But I did catch on to you. You had zero patience. <laughs> <laughs> but I used that to my advantage, and I was able to figure out that if there were certain tasks I didn't want to do, I'd either mess it up on purpose, or just take extra long, and Justin would push me out of the way and do it himself. <laughs> so I'm sorry, but thank you. 
After five years, I was ready to do something else. I wanted to learn more about the Eagle, and I went down to the flight line and started crewing jets. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for the crew chiefs. You guys opened the doors for me, taught me responsibility, independence, and more importantly, to have thick skin. You also taught me to never mop next to Kirk Dunkel. <laughs> <laughs> I've been in trouble once or twice in my career, but I have never been yelled at more and belittled more by Kirk Dunkel of just my mop barely touching in the inside of the square that he was mopping. <laughs> Crew chiefs also taught me to never put a rental car in park while going 60 miles per hour down the freeway. <laughs> and if you hold the horn on longer than an hour, you'll actually melt the wires together. <laughs> I might be where I'm at today without the flight line, but I guarantee you I wouldn't have as many stories. Probably my liver would be a little bit healthier. <laughs> Shadow control. I would not be here today if it wasn't for you. Shadow is kind of a halfway house of maintainers. Almost at one point, we were all prior maintainers. Major Lipkowski, Major Thune, thank you for taking a risk and hiring me into your cyber position. I thought I screwed up the interview when you asked me about my when you asked me about my IT experience, and my response was that I could configure my home Wi-Fi, that I jailbroke an Xbox, <laughs> and I was able to program the DirecTV black card where we could get every single channel for free. <laughs> 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 Later, you explained to me that you can hire anyone to do the job, but it was finding the right fit for the family. Chief Wilson, for the first time in my career, you opened my eyes of being a supervisor. You didn't hide anything from anyone. Eleven years into the Air Force was the first time that I saw a manning document. In maintenance, the same was a myth. It was kind of a unicorn. Chief Gons kept the same guard at all times. And if you were ever to look at it, he would erase your name out of it and put you down at the bottom. <laughs> Chief Wilson, I don't think I've ever met anyone else that cared more about being enlisted than you did. Or you just enjoyed pissing off all the pilots. I'm not really sure what you're <laughs> Senior Master Sergeant Evinger, you're the OG chat GPT. <laughs> Poor Dave didn't know what he got himself into when he joined Shadow. Dave was a crew chief, just like me. Crew chiefs can't write, we can't give speeches. We're crew chiefs for a reason. Our admin scores were below a 50. It's kind of more the finger painting than drawing for our style. But Dave was different. Dave taught me that there were two different theirs. <laughs> Combo tooth more as a verbal cause. <laughs> so we found out real quick that Dave was going to proofread all of my papers. <laughs> so we did a, just that. Dave was my original Jet GPT. I even used him at the academy often. I tried to get the, them to add your name to the certificate, but they wouldn't do it. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Neil, Captain Susie, and Senior Master Sergeant Patrick. I wouldn't be here today without you guys. Believe in me, allow me to cross train, cross train into the controller career field. Trust me as a superintendent of command and control while allowing, the, allowing me the freedom to go around and shake every money tree out there to build the best weapon systems in the Air Force. Husky. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for you. Fighting for the OSS, giving it chief representation. It was a battle I didn't know if you could win. You had no doubt from the moment we first talked about it. Knowing what the OSS brings to the wing and how the group of individuals would be the ones easing the way to that 35 integration. Thank you for the mentorship, and we're going to miss you. One tough one. My brother. I don't know where I'd be at without you. You've always had my back. You've always looked out for me. Well, not so much when we were younger. I actually think we were trying to kill one another. <laughs> I do remember I almost put in a steeple through your eye, but the door jam saved your life. <laughs> but from junior high on, you've always been there for me. You kept me from getting my butt kicked as a freshman. You gave me a place to live after boot camp. And you call me on a daily basis, just asking if there's anything that you can help me with. So you truly are the best brother I could ever ask.
Mom, I obviously would not be here without you. <laughs> Mom, the success of your two sons um, have had a direct reflection of how you raised us. The most important lesson I can think of that you taught me was to take nothing for granted and to always appreciate everything, even the small things. I know we were not the easiest kids to raise, but I think you did a pretty good job. Kelsey, I really wouldn't be here today without you. You've been my rock, my guidance, my voice of reasoning. You make me a better husband, a better father, a better leader. I'm still here today because a little while back you recognized that I kind of lost my way in life. So, started kind of going down the dark path that you saved me. You gave me direction, reminded me of my purpose. I love you. Make it funny. <laughs> the onions. <laughs> so Zoe and Bryson, I'm here today because of you guys. You two are the best thing that's ever happened to me. Zoe, you're the strongest person I've ever met. Three back surgeries, and I don't even think you've ever shed a tear. You're constantly, constantly always looking forward onto your next milestone. I can't wait to see how you change the world. Bryson, you're like a little mini me. You know, I can't understand half of your vocab. <laughs> you're truly the coolest kid I know. So, thanks for keeping me young, allowing me to be your coach, but love your father. following the ceremony. Please stand for the playing of the 